All right, hi everyone. Um, today we are gonna be doing what's called a read aloud for your remote work. And we haven't done this before, but I thought it would be kind of a nice change. And just honestly, we don't have enough time to get everything through everything in class with inference that I want to get to. And this book, The Water Tower, is definitely something that cannot be missed, okay? Um, so today we are gonna be reading our story, The Water Tower. Now, as we read, I want you to have open in front of you. You kinda need to either do split screen or um, make it so that you're able to see the questions, I have them open on my other computer, so if you have another device. Um, if not, I think you can do this split screen so you can like see me reading, and then you'll have the questions open on the other side. Because there'll be a couple different times that I'm gonna pause as we read, and then you'll be able to answer the questions as we go. And that way, at the end, you'll have like one question left to answer that fits at the end of the book, okay? So like the first question says, it says, before we read, what is a prediction that you can make based only on the title and the cover? So this is the title, and this book is called The Water Tower. This is written by a guy named Gary Crew, and Gary Crew is an Australian author who's won tons of awards, and he's working with an illustrator named Stephen, his name is here, Stephen Woolman. Now, this book is interesting in that it is going to ask us based on the way that the pictures are, to turn the book a lot, um, which should give you some indication on how important the illustrations are as we read. So just take a look at the cover and the title, The Water Tower, um, and make one prediction based on those two things. So if I were you, I would pause this, I would make a prediction, and then I would start it again. All right, here we go. This is the water tower. So right away, the book makes us turn like this. All right, the water tower. Nobody in Preston could remember when the water tower was built or who had built it, but there it stood on Shooter's Hill. Its iron legs rusted its egg-shaped tank warped and leaking, casting a long dark shadow across the valley, across Preston itself. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more closely. I want you to be thinking about repeating images as we read this, because in a lot of um, the pictures, you're going to see a repeating image that is always connected to the water tower. So as you look at the water tower in this picture, I want you to really look at the tank, the design on it, and see if you can see this design repeated throughout the story. Now, I guess the next question I'd like to put in, I'm gonna write it right now, is what is a water tower and what does the city use it for? Okay, continuing on. So again, as you look at the pictures, look for repeated images, things that you saw on the water tower that you now might see in other places. Okay. One summer afternoon, Spike Trotter and Baba D'Angelo met by the service station and together they went to the tower for a swim. Spike led the way as usual. My mother says it's dangerous up there, he said, but it's worth it, huh? Bubba puffed on behind. His mother couldn't have cared less where he went. At the summit, Spike stopped to look down at the sweltering town. Suckers, he grinned, and headed for the tower. Last summer, a security fence had kept trespassers out. But now the metal posts were twisted and flattened, and barbed wire lay coiled on the ground. You reckon Vandal's done that? Asked Bubba, recovering his breath. But Spike was already on the top. Hurry up, he yelled, throwing open the access hatch. It's scorching up here. He pulled his shirt over his head, dropped his shorts, and clambered down into the tank. So there he is going into the tank. It was dark inside, 
Dark's got a sort of color, Bubba said, squatting on the bottom rung of the ladder. Sort of green, like moss, like slimy dead moss. Spike didn't answer, except for the ghostly wailing. He kept up for the fun of hearing the echo. He might not have been there at all. Spike? Bubba called. Spikey? Still no answer. So Bubba whistled for a while, then splashed a bit, but only up to his knees. He didn't particularly like the water. He wasn't keen on slipping down naked into its murky dark. It was from time to time he glanced up at the shaft of sunlight angling in from the open hatch, imagining. So I'm going to show you again, look at the repeated image and then a last glimpse inside the tank. Oh, your arms get tired holding that up. Isn't that funny? I'll switch to the other side over here now. Okay. At last, Bubba called. Spikey, I'm going up now. I'm going to go get dressed. He guessed that Spike was somewhere beneath him in the water that eddied and swirled. So this picture might be one of the creepiest in the story. And that you see Bubba heading back up out of the water. But you don't see Spike anywhere. You don't hear him. You don't see him. And again, there's the tank. And there Bubba is on top. It's in Australia, remember, it would be very hot. Bubba stepped out onto the top of the tank. The wind was hot, the glare terrible. Blinking and squinting, he looked about for his towel. It had blown to the far side of the tank and hung there, caught on the head of a valve. Maybe I should have stayed down, he muttered to himself, tiptoeing across the burning metal. With the towel wrapped around him, he looked for his clothes. Spikes were there, wedged beneath the hatch, and he saw his shirt flapping at the top of the ladder. But where were his shorts? He turned around and around, nothing. He dropped on his hands and knees and crept to the side of the tank, yelping with each movement as the burning surface scarred, seared, sorry. He peered over the side, nothing. He made his way back to the hatch, calling, hey, are my pants down there? Here the boys are again. What? Came the response. He repeated the question, then waited, standing on his crumpled shirt, keeping his towel tight around him. Spike's dripping head suddenly appeared. Nope, he sputtered. Nothing's down there but water. And he pulled himself free of the dark. Bubba looked about him again. Well, then they've blown away. That's what happened, I bet. Spike laughed. Doesn't matter, he said, shaking himself and reaching for his clothes. You've got your towel. Go home in that. Bubba shook his head. No way. My mother finds out that I lost my pants. I'm dead. They looked at each other. They knew that this was true. Mama D'Angelo could land a wallop like nobody else in town. Poor Bubba. And then again, there's the tank. I'll go back, Spike volunteered. I'll run the whole way. I'll sneak in through your bedroom window and get another pair. Top drawer of your dresser, right? Bubba nodded. I'll wait here. I'll get back down out of the sun. Will you, will you be long? Spike was already on the ladder. I didn't win the cross country for nothing, did I? I'll run. His last words were lost in the wind. So there's Bubba, or the top of the tank. So you can see that through all these previous pages, we've been zooming in on the tank. And there goes Bubba, or Spike, pardon me, running home to get Bubba's shorts. All right, at this point, okay, I'm going to put in another question for you to answer. I want you to think about, okay, so now the boys are separating, and Bubba is staying with the tank, and Spike is running home. What do you think might happen 
next. Okay, so Spike is running home. Okay, so it's really scorching hot up there. Bubba can't stay up there any longer. And so like he says to Spike, I'm gonna go get out of the sun. So let me, cut down on the glare maybe. Let me turn this one off too. Okay, so as we look at this image, this is Bubba in the tank by himself. A lot of people often notice all of the swirls in the bottom, other things on the sides. So that's him down in the tank. And again, our image now in the spiral at the bottom has gone completely into, so we are looking now right into the tank. Okay. All right. So Bubba climbed into the tank. I'll be all right, he muttered. I'll be all right. But when he looked, the bottom rung was a long way from the light and the water seemed darker. So he stopped halfway and waited. All about him, the tower creaked and groaned. It's the heat, he reasoned, the heat expanding the metal. There was a smell. That's the algae, all rotten and festering. The water eddied and swirled. It's the wind shifting the tower. It's old and rickety. But he was frightened, very frightened, and rung by rung so as not to shake the ladder, not to disturb anything, he crept upwards towards the sun. So he's scared down there. Now, as this is happening, I want you to look at this particular picture. So here we have the tank in the background, and here's Spike, and he's running, okay? And then here's Bubba up here, and he's coming up out of the tank, because he was scared. When Bubba reached the top, he lifted himself out and squatted a moment, catching his breath, calming his heart. I'll get off this stupid thing, he said. I'll go and wait in the bushes. This picture is also a little creepy. So let's take a look at all the things that are happening here. So you've got Spike running, but you've got all of these townspeople. And I want you to think, what are they all appearing to be staring at as Spike goes by? And then on the inset here, now down here, the inset has left the tower and now it shows Spike, or Bubba, pardon me, out of the tank and on the ground. So we have this tiny picture of him, but then we have this picture of these creepy townspeople. What are they doing? All right, so that's your, okay. So there was a question there, I don't know if it caught it. Um, what are the townspeople staring at as Spike runs through town? And why do you think they are staring at this object? Okay, now, so we have the next picture. So we have Spike over here, sorry, it's all backwards on here, it's tricky. Spike over here, and as you can see, I want you to also look in this image for some of our repeated imagery things that we can see that we've seen before. So we see Spike going in the window. And we see Bubba over here, supposedly waiting in the bushes. This picture might be important. And then as we turn the picture, we see also Bubba's mom. And what, she's in the window. And what is she also staring at? picture is kind of creepy as well. The sun found him wherever he went, starting blisters on his skin. The hot wind burned his cheeks. How much longer, he wondered. When will he come? Then something moved, way up on the top of the tower, something Bubba couldn't quite make out. This always gets a reaction. Because look at these townspeople. Again, what are some images that you see? And what do we see in their eyes? Spike, Bubba called. Is that you? No answer. 
Spike, he whispered, getting up. Spiky? So he's sitting out by the bushes, but he sees this movement. And the only thing he can think that it would be might be Spike. But nobody answers. This is the next picture. I want you to look at Bubba's eye. And what do we see here in his eye? That's going to be your next question. So what do we see here in his eye, the white part? And then what are these lines coming up like this? And have we seen those before in another image? Okay, we're almost done. This is one of our last pictures. So here is Bubba now. When Spike returned, calling and waving the shorts, Bubba stuck his head straight up out of the tank. Oh boy, he said, dressing himself. If I stayed down there a minute longer, I reckon I would have dissolved. The water was great. I had the best swim. I taught myself to lie on the bottom. I could do it to the count of 120. No lie, two minutes. Boy, that was great. Spike's eyes narrowed. This was not like Bubba. Not like Bubba at all. Go on, he said, showing him. Show us your fingers then. Show us the water wrinkles. Come on. So he doesn't believe that Bubba would do this because at the beginning of the story, Bubba wouldn't even go past the ladder. And now he's staying on the bottom for two minutes. And this is the last image in the book. Bubba turned away. No, no time now, he answered. My mother will be worried. You know what a worrier she is. She'll be scared something happened to me, won't she? He shut the hatch with a thud. Deep in the tank, the water eddied and swirled. All right. Now your last question, you really, you really can't get any of these particularly wrong. It's more just what did you see and what do you think? So your last question for today is just, what do you think happened to Bubba? All of a sudden he seems to have gone through this strange change. And what do you think is in the tank? All right. So last your last question for today, and this is called The Water Tower. We're going to do another one later this week that is the sequel to The Water Tower, and it is called Beneath the Surface. All right. So I'll put this last question in, and once you do that, that's all you have for today. All right. Have a good one.